Okay, so I'm gonna take a look at Valence 3D app, which came out of nowhere just a few weeks ago. It's a polygonal 3D modeling app for the iPad, and it's something I've been waiting for for quite some time. So let's have a quick look at the main functionality and the difference between what a lot, lot of you will already know about, which is things like Nomad Sculpt. So as I always do, I've taken a really deep dive into this new software uh, and I'm going to give you a quick run through uh, my, I've probably had just over a week now or maybe a, a little bit longer and I've made quite a few models and I've made lots of mistakes and I've been in touch with the developer about where it's at and where it's going. So I know as much as I know and there will be things that change. So by the time you watch this, it could be well out of date. So this is April of 2024 and I'm giving you my first week's experience with a quick overview of what you can actually do and a little bit about the interface. Okay, so if you search for Valence, V-A-L-E-N-C-E, -E, you can see it there in the App Store. It is iPad only at the moment. So with the I when I say iPad, I mean iOS. So you get an iOS version that runs on both the iPad and your iPhone. Now it's $29.99 in the UK, so obviously different in your country perhaps, but that's a one-off fee. So, and obviously there is no uh, demo, there's no trial. So you either buy it or you don't. Uh, and obviously this is Apple, therefore if you if you buy it and don't like it, you can refund it. So um, I personally, even though it hasn't got all of the tools that I want yet, the commitment that the developers made has made me want to really dive into this. So I've been waiting for something like this for, for quite some time. So purchase it and then um, on we go. Okay, so when you open it, you might come to this screen first of all, and it gives you lots of these. These ones at the bottom are some of the default uh, things that come with it. So, and you will notice things like room plan, lidar scan, um, and then these at the bottom. There's there's uh, a pen, a Veroni Veroni poke, and lamp. There's quite a few things in here that I won't cover today. Um, there are some basic models, so a basic kit bash model here and then things like this scan to clean up. We're gonna look at the basic functionality today, but rest assured, I will be covering a lot of this once I you know, fully decide to, to, to get on board with, with Valence, which I am honestly thinking that, that this is a program that we will be featuring a lot on this channel. So what we want to do is look at the, the, the basic setup. So for now, I'll just open something like this, which is a lamp, and this comes default with it, but it's a good one for me to show you what this is all about, why it's different than something like Nomad. So um, uh, this is the interface here. It's very, very simple. I am left-handed, but I'm not changing anything over. There's no, uh, uh, there's no functions that will be any different than yours like there is in other programs that I use here. Now, what you can see on the screen there is a 3D model with the wireframe switched on. The, the view modes up here are at the top right-hand side. So we've got this one which if you tap it, you'll see it's got a diffuse render mode and you can have wireframes on and off and you can turn the shadows on and off. Next one, you've got wireframe. So literally just a wireframe. You've got that one, which is X-ray, which I do quite like. And you've got physically based rendering or PBR rendering, which is great. And again, you can uh, hold on that and you can turn the wireframe on and off. And then we've got this one, which I'm going to give you a, a, a quick warning about this right now. So this thing here is a full, uh, it's experimental, as it said on the screen. This is a full rendering solution. Now, if you happen to save at this point with the software, with this turned on, you may, as your models get bigger, it may cause a problem in writing the file. Now, I've got several models that won't open and the developers helped me to get them back open. That could very well be fixed by the time you watch this video. So my only warning to you is, if you kick out of this at this point by going back up here, don't be in this mode. Switch it back to one of the basic modes and probably that's the one I use the most. So when you go back now, it will, it will save it with that as the default renderer. And that's where I, I had a problem. So if you look down here, these two models here, they won't open. They, they simply won't open back up because of that, that render. But it does say it is experimental. So we're not going to worry about that at this point. So that's the top bit there. The top right is a settings button here. And there's all kinds of stuff for you to explore in here. The one that I want you to focus on is this. Disable your iCloud. 
If you don't disable your iCloud, again, you may have problems. Now, these are initial problems that we've had, but these are just for you to have a look at it. Um, certainly, if you're looking at it within a few weeks of this video coming out, I'm really sure the speed that the developer's changing things here that this won't be a problem. But just save stuff locally while you're working on it if you do what I've done and had a, have a quick look at it. And everything else are just settings that you might want to go and have a, have a have an explore. So things like show axis, show the grid, very normal kind of you know default settings, the color scheme, dark and light. And there is a few things in there that I might refer to as, as we go on. And that's a basic look at that top menu there. Now, the big thing that matters in here is these modes on the top left. So we've got object mode, face mode, which means individual faces. We've got edge mode, individual edges, and point mode here, vertex mode, so we can select individual points. Now, this is the big thing that is missing from Nomad Sculpt, and we probably aren't likely to get it. This is what you'll see in a polygonal based program. So, Blender in its modeling mode, Cinema 4D, uh, uh, Maya, all of these more higher end programs all have this as a default. Even ZBrush has a as its own thing called Z Modeler that gives you access to individually controlling the elements, the, the, these components as they're called. And what you will notice is this is rounded, it's smooth, and that's because this button's on here, which is a modifier, the same as Blender, or the same as a tag in Cinema 4D, where it gives you a subdivision and a rounding. So if you're used to Nomad Sculpt, you will be subdividing up to get this effect and then pulling that subdivision back. But you can have that on and off at any point, and that's how we, basically that is, pretty much how we um, you know model a lot of things ready for subdivision and as always that's where we start to model with quads because it's very predictable with this subdivision you can see up here everything's quite predictable there might be triangles in this one at the top actually but i'm not seeing any particular errors so there are your modes how to switch between the modes um and and one or two things that i will just say as 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 I want this and it's not here yet. When you select a, a single component, so let's say we select this, we're in vertex mode on this point, and then you can move it. On In most of the programs, you get what's called a tweak mode, so you don't have to go in and individually select it first to then be able to move it. So that is definitely something that we need quite urgently in this because it is quite painful to go select, move, select, move. And the, and the next thing that that, that, that that would then lead me to say is you can drag across and select a few of them like this, but there's no what we call soft selection or fall off yet. So we haven't got a, a way to have a nice fall off, which means we could drag this out nice and smoothly. Um, so that's something that, that definitely is, is needed, um, you know, before this becomes uh, an equal to the big programs that are out there. Um, if, you've, if you've gone through all of that now, so object, face, uh, edge, point, and the top one there on the top left is obviously how to get back to the menu. This is a select tool, so that brings us right back to whenever, whenever you're in doubt, I would hit the select tool and that would bring you back to a default state. So if you've got any of these open here and you're not sure what to what to do next, if you hit that, it will it will bring them back. You can just tap on the screen, but I find that's um, because that's the mode that I'm going to be in the most, the select mode. It means you're not going to be in one of these other modes that I'm about to show you. So going back to that basic mode it, it, it is never a bad thing. So I'm switching between quickly now. Uh, between the different components. So a couple of things that as you, as you work down here, now you've got the next one down is obviously move. So the white button in the middle is the ability to move everything and then you can move it on the individual axes. There is snapping, which is up in these settings here that I, sh I showed you. You can enable snap to grid and all of that. Uh, we've got this here, which is rotational and that can be any component. So that can be edges, that can be your um, uh, your faces so you can just select two faces with a with a, a tap like that so i'm i'm these are your um d down here this this will give you your selection type so generally if you want this one which would be add to a selection and then you can just tap and add to it like so and that gives you multiple selections uh triple tap will give you a select loop and um, not very really sure about the method for um uh, 
going the other way. So if you want it to select around this edge like this, you, the, the documentation says you can triple tap and then give it three to guide it. Uh, well, that didn't quite work, but that, that one I've not fully explored to the point where I can get it reliably to work yet. Carrying on down here, we've got this one, which is scale. Um, and then we've got things depending on what mode you're in. You can see them changing. So uh, from those original top few, so the move, the scale and rotate, then we go into these um, all these different functions like to be able to extrude or bevel or to, to split. So what I'm doing is I'm going to move to another component now. Um, I'm going to open up something else and that will, sh that will show us um, these things a little bit better. So I've done plus and opened a box and that is our box. Now I didn't change any of the settings. If you do any of these things from the bottom, so I'm going bottom right plus and you open any of these. So for example, I could open a tube and say change all of these settings and each of these primitives in here has are all different settings. So I could, for example, on the tube, I could change the outer radius, inner radius, height, um, angle resolution, so it gives you more resolution, and then the vertical resolution. So you've got parametric objects, basically. So if you open things up and you want to change them, you do it here, first of all. So I'll get rid of that with a delete button here, and we'll just work on that cube with nothing else set. So I, I didn't go in and change that at all. So let's work our way through here. So first of all, our faces, you know, you can move them, as I've said, you can rotate them, as I said, and you can scale them, obviously, and that's on each of the different axes. But also now we've got these things here. So you've got this, which is your extrude. You've got this, which is your inset, and then back to extrude. You can see how that works quite, uh, quite straightforward. So come to this front face. We could extrude it, extrude it again. We could inset it and we could extrude that. So you can see that, that that works absolutely as you'd expect. It's absolutely fine. This one is quite nice. This gives you a little pyramid, a little triangle. Um, so not, not a thing that I would use very much, but um, ca can be quite fun, I, I found out. It's not something I've seen in many programs before. Um, and this one here is really interesting because this will harden off an edge. So let me show you that. Um, so for example, if we take this model here and we subdivide it, it goes rounded all the way around like that. Now say you want to harden off an edge, so say I wanted to extrude this out here and you wanted this all, um, all hardened, you can tap on this and then you can go left and right for hardness, but you can't see anything happening. But if you now use that button that I've already showed you, the subdivision button, and now you do it, you can see that as you scroll, it gets tighter on that selected edge. You can see it's getting less and less rounded. So you basically can throw in um, a settings for a crease. That's, that's basically creasing this edge without doing a subdivision there. Now, if it doesn't look, um, you know, it's not looking particularly smooth here, you can change some settings. Um, and you will find that I go into these panels quite a lot. So there's this, this one here. This is your commands. Remember, if you if you can't get back, you can either strike across or just tap your selection tool. So um, uh, box inspector is the next one. That's this one. So just switch between them, as I've just shown you. So you can just keep going back and forward between them. You will be doing that a lot. And in here, you've got your subdivision modifiers. So if you go up the subdivision modifiers, you can see how smooth that got there. So if I come down them, it's very rough. So that does help. And then that will also show you this here, whether you want to increase this um, uh, crease anymore. So if you crease it all the way up, just keep going and going and going, you can see that it's giving you a really nice creased edge. Um, what we would normally do is put an edge loop around that, which brings me to the next bit, which is edge loops here. So if you just go and you uh, tap on any edge and you start with this tool here, which is little scissors, this will give you a uh, ability to put edge loops in. And you can see wherever I do it, I can move it and then tap it and it tightens that down there. So I can do it up here, move it down there. Now in a lot of other programs, when you do this, you can then subdivide that, but you can't do that in here yet. So you just get it placed in the middle and you can move it either side and then accept it like so. And once it's once you, once it's committed, it's committed and you can't go back. It's not, there's no, there's no this is destructive. It's, it's created at that point. 
So now we're still on edge, remember? So you've got this one here, which is extrude an edge. So we could take this edge. Um, it's, it's usually done on an open edge. So let me show you what I mean by that. So take that face and we'll delete that face and we'll actually turn subdivision off for a few minutes. You can see there we're back down to that. So for example, now if I take that edge, select it, and I'm going to go on to this, it will extrude it out one way or another. Um, so it's following the, the surface. It's not coming out this way, it's following the, the what they call the surface normal of the edge, or the normal of the edge. So if you wanted four of them, you'd have to select four of them. Let me just get that one selected, and then we'd have to extrude that one out again. So, and you can see there, it did it the, the, the same way. But then what that's given us is they weren't joined, were they? So if we go back to our vertex or point, let's just get to an angle where you can see what I'm actually doing. So I've got a point here and I've got a point here. And if you can't select them, I'm struggling to select them in that angle there. So the easy thing to do is just go to that selection tool and drag across. And now we've got to. And now we're in edge mode instead of, um, sorry, we're in point mode. And you can see over here this button, this little red one, that will snap them together like that. Now it does snap to the middle point between them. Most other programs would give you the ability to snap to either the first one, the last one, or the middle. Um, so that is a little bit of a watch out because it will bring them together in a, a place that you might not want. So if you are predictably trying to extrude this, it might be a problem. But that's how you do that bit. That's how you um, extrude an individual edge. And you can also, let's co come back here, you can also use this tool which is bevel and edge. So if I take that edge and bevel it, you can see there it'll just throw a bevel on it across the edge like that. So you can keep doing that wherever you are. Now be careful with this. It's not a tool I like to use a lot. It's quite, for, for a polygonal modeler, it, it can be quite destructive. Um, so, you know, you, you, you want to be a little bit careful with it. Um, just trying to put a split down there. You want to be a little bit careful with it. If I just, just if I was to select just this edge here, so just this one, and then do it, you can see there it's going to make you some n-gons. So that's more than four sided and some triangles. So less than four sided. So it's gonna, you know, it could be a problem for you if you're, if you, you know, if you already know what bevels are, then you know that, you know, they're great, um, but they're also a pain if you don't know how to manage them. So, and then the last one, as I've already showed you in the edges, is the split tool. So that's that's that's, you know, pretty well known tool to most people that do this kind of modeling. So one last thing I didn't show you there is on the vertex mode, if you go into vertex mode and you select one vertex or vertice and then go to this one here, this will bevel the vertex. So um, that'll give you that on the edge. So again, not hugely useful for most people, but it's, um, you know, it is there. Now, one thing that I will tell you, you'll go, you'll, you'll be asking for right now, which is where do I get the knife tool and cut round geometry so that it changes its flow? It's not there yet. That is one of the big tools that I need. It's one of the big five tools that I need to make this program uh, equal to the, the ones I use every day. So there is no knife tool. And you'll see in a lot of the models that I'm going to show you that I've made, you, you can see that they're not they're not that detailed in terms of the polygonal flow or the polygon flow. And that's a real shame for now, but it actually says on the website that they're working on it, so it shouldn't be too long. So let's open up some of my models and I'll show you a, a little bit more about what's what's going on here. So if we come back up here and we'll open up something like, um, let me just see, what something basic first of all. So, um, so we'll pick this bigger one that I'm working on. So this is a spider and you'll be able to see some good things about this scene is it's got a few things in it that I can show you that I like. Okay, so this was about my fifth model that I, I worked on. And the, the things I want to show you in the scene now are, one, I want you to focus on the fact that there are images in the scene. To get those in, it's down at the bottom plus, and you put photo here. So you tap photo, and you can just bring them in based on what you you tell Valence that you you know you, you you allow it to use your photo library and you can bring the images in. Once the images are in, let's actually do it, shall we? So let's just bring in something like this little character that I'm working on. So this is a, a, a new Shrek character that I'm working on. Um, 
based on the, the the design for Shrek that was never used actually. So, but you can see there, there is actually now an image in the scene. And if you want to rotate it and you want to keep it predictable, you hold on the screen and you can snap. So there you go, you can go snap to 90 and then move it around. And that is your, that's an image in your scene. That's how I got these other images in. But I can't select them. And the reason I can't select them is because down here, bottom left, so at the bottom of that menu, you have photos here and you can lock them or unlock them and you can make them visible or invisible like so. So you can basically, you can see all of your different models that are in there. I haven't named anything in here, which is, um, as you will know, it's just exactly how I work and I'm terrible at that. But here we go. Um, you can see the photos and uh, I'll, I'll just unlock them all for now. So we'll have a look at that. So tap on the little icon at the bottom and they go so now you can manipulate them you'd be on object mode tap on the image and you can move the image around like so so it does support pngs but there's a little bit of um uh, you can see there as i come around the back the bottom png isn't showing so it's showing the model but it's not showing um this here so what if you want to hide the back of the photograph? I don't know which is the front and which is the back, but I'll hide whichever way is the back. So we come down to the bottom here and we've got double sided on the photo inspector, just tap that off. So obviously this is the front with it double sided off. The back is completely invisible. Um, so photos are a great thing to do that, you know, they're, 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 you can, they're a bit treated just like models. You can be, delete them. Um, and, and you know restore them as you need them or just simply hide and show them so this is a model uh, i'm not going to go too deep into this just showing you what i've done it's a lot of repeats in here so you can see i've used basic tubes um combine them all together how do you combine them together well what you would want to do what you want to do is make sure you're on this one which is add to selection tap the first one tap the second one that's two together and then over here you want to go to your commands and combine meshes and they're now both of them one item all joined together so let's quickly look at those commands while we've got it open and we'll just talk through um, what we've got there so at the top we've got clear selection then we've got remove the modifier and that's that's the subdivision modifier that you've been using and there's also a mirror modifier in there as well that can be on and off you can toggle on this which is tool measurements and as you can see, it gives you scale for each of the selected components. So that can be quite useful. And you can copy this data out from here as well. So, I, you know, that, that has been quite useful for me. You can duplicate. You can apply the transforms. Now, what the apply transforms is, it will actually snap the, uh, uh, the pivot point back to the center so it'll reset it back to the center so i'll show you what happens so apply transform i always turn recursive off and say confirm and you watch now it will apply it and it will snap that um uh, cursor right back to the center of the world there that is not as good as any program that i've seen that uses like a 3d cursor like blender or the ability to move the pivot like you can in things like cinema 4d and silo and all of these other kind of programs so that is something that i, I would need quite quite quickly especially for things like this is like a spider where i want to be able to rotate these pivots around now what i've done there is i've moved this arm to the center of the world and applied the tr you know literally applied the transformation there and that's that's allowed me to to then just just set it for for this one component from that area but it's not ideal it's absolutely not ideal okay so let's have another quick look down there so if you carry on down center the pivot we'll 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 center the pivot to that model um smooth i wouldn't recommend using so this is um you know this this is your subdivision but do it from the menu so you don't have to go messing in there you can just call it from the sidebar um, repair the mesh will fix a mesh if it's managed to get damaged and um, again i'll cover that in later videos smooth shading on and off is a very common thing flat shading um harden the normals and soften the normals will will affect how it looks for you and obviously there is a delete so that menu is one that you'll be dipping in and out of, along with the, the, the main menu, this one, the, the inspector. You will be in and out of those two more than anything. Now, what you might have noticed is when I had nothing selected, 
this can come up the inspector so this is your camera so there's your camera field of view there's your ability to change your background so if i go to theme or environment or color so color i can select anything that i want for the background and at the moment if you switch it to environment you get the environment that's built in um, which is one HDRI at the moment. I'm sure that'll change. You can unblur that. So if we blur, unblur it like so, and you can see that it's a full environment. Um, and, and, the, and the scene at the moment is um, not using it uh, particularly. If you go to this, when you go to full render, well, let's go to PBR first, so physically based rendering, you can see there PBR is now using it. And that's reflecting what's in the background onto the creature there. So that that um, is is a, is a mode that you'll be going to quite a lot. And remember the one that I said be careful of. You can switch to path trace rendering. It's, it takes a minute to calculate because this is like the equivalent of if you know Blender, for example, the PBR, the first one is called Blender EV, and this is the equivalent of Blender Cycles. So as you can see there, it's taking a lot longer and it's a little bit jerky and it's fully rendering it now. So, you know, th th this, this um, background here, you can change the intensity and you can rotate the background alone from here. So that will change how it looks in this render. And obviously, if you increase the intensity or decrease the intensity, slide it to the left, it will brighten up the scene like so so i'm going to turn that off because obviously i'm recording on this ipad so it's quite heavy on the ipad i'll change it back to physical rendering and what i'll also do is i'll change that back to just a color and make that back to something that's not going to kill your eyes so back to gray so most of the time i find i'll be switching between that mode straight away from the from the diffuse renderer to the physically based renderer and that'll give you almost everything that you want and occasionally switch to during the modeling the wireframe or you might want to switch to that, which is your um, your X-ray, uh, and, and it can be quite useful while you're modelling. So let me show you one or two more models then. So this is more of a character that, uh, or a creature, should I say? So this is a praying mantis that I built. Um, this was my first test of how you know can I do any kind of organic modelling? As you can see, low polygon, nothing like you would get from Nomad unless you're sculpting a nomad and now using the new quadri mesher since version 1.85 the reason we need this is because this gives us topology that we can then animate uv map easily and then send to things like unreal engine or send it to for, for texturing etc you need good topology to be able to use that model further down the line let's switch to another one so this is another robot one. You can see it's still got good topology underneath, subdivided there. Lots and lots and lots of parts, the same as the spider. It's the same legs as the spider. And lots of these rotational, um, you know, these are all cylinders and that kind of thing. So at the moment, I found it great for this kind of kit bashy kind of building. But the actual act of modeling where you're making individual um, polygonal parts, like, like a, an organic face, I haven't done much of yet, that yet because of the fact we don't have those tools that I mentioned at the start of the video. I do honestly think that's coming soon. Uh, and when it does, that, that will really, really help us. So one thing that I didn't touch on is this, the ability to switch to an orthographic view using this view cube here or view, you know, view, view tool here. And basically, it just gives you that ability to go front, side, you know, left, which are, you know, top, bottom, the, the, the usual that you get in most 3D programs. Um, and, and it just snaps it instead of it being in perspective, as you can see here, it's going to put it into straight away into an orthographic view like so. And that does help. That that really does help us when you're when you're modeling, you want it predictably to go through. Orthographic is obviously a method that we would we, we would want to see in any 3D program. So switch to another scene. This is actually from Nomad and it's been 
quad remeshed. I was just bringing this in simply to show you that you can import other geometry from other programs. So this is a fish I made a few weeks ago. Uh, you may know it from my Instagram, but it just shows that you can then bring that in and then you can just use the polygonal tools that you would you would expect that you know that you'd be able to use at this point. So you can just do exactly what you've you know what, what you've done. I notice there that it's actually separated, which is interesting, which means each one is is separated. So there's the way it's come in is not welded together. So that's really interesting. So what if you need to export? Well, that's down here on the right. You've got view it in AR, which is you can send it out to um, an augmented reality. Um, I'll just show you on screen. That was one that I did on my first test. Um, but then you can also send it out as a 2D image, an OBJ, an STL, a USD or USDZ. So you've got a few options there to be able to send it out to other programs. And most of those, apart from the 2D one, will send it to programs like Nomad or Blender, no problem. Um, so the, the options are enough for a start. Okay, so why am I saying this is um, fairly new when we've got something like Forger app already? So one of the big problems I have with Forger app is this. So in this program, if I go split it down the middle, like so, and if I was to just get rid of those faces, so if I just use my selection tool here and then make sure I'm, I'm on being able to select like this, uh, I could do this loads of different ways and just delete that out. I've got all of my sphere, oh, sorry, all of my cube on one half now. And if I just hit mirror, there you go, we have mirror. So if I go back to points, I can now move them around and I can start modeling symmetrically. And that is one of the most important things for me uh, as a character modeler, because I want to model like this. I want to start splitting and chopping, and that's where I need those new tools now. In here, I'm, you know, I, I, I would obviously need at this point. I'd need to be able to to um, uh, start smoothing it down and be able to, um, you know, start rounding it off and changing the flow of of the polygons, which is the normal way that we would. We would do this kind of thing um, a, a, as a polygonal modeler. But Forger app fails at this uh, for me. I, I've tried it time and time and time again, um, and, and I can't get it to repeat. You know, Basically, I can't get it to work reliably as a mirrored object. Um, and that's one. That's a big downfall for me. It stops me using it, um, and, and if it's not going to get fixed, then I, I, you know, I'll never switch back to using it. Um, whereas this, so far for me, has been quite robust. Even even with those errors that I've said about, it doesn't have the tweak mode yet. And actually, this is a problem, which is it's not locked to the center. Um, so in Blender, that's called clipping. You can just switch clipping and it locks it there. I haven't been able to find that yet to lock it to the center. So you have to be a little bit careful. But if you do subdivide it, it does see it as a, you know, as a seam there. So as you're modeling, it doesn't really bother me too much. As long as I'm careful with that center seam, it, it, it doesn't usually um, cause me any major problems. But as you can see, it's, you know, it's holding its own quite well, not splitting off the center. But that's a tiny little thing for now. And, and I'm absolutely confident this has taken five years to get to this point. So, um, you know, the, the, the developer has done an amazing job. So there's a whirlwind tour. I've taken you through the basics of what I, you know, there's lots missing. I haven't covered all, any of this at the top in the middle and I haven't deep dived into making something yet. But I've shown you what I've been doing with it. I've given you a you know a first look. Please f fill in down below in the comments. Tell me what you've been doing with it if you've already tried it. What it is that you want. We should you know we'll let, let's build a list of the tools that we want next. You know, be careful and don't go asking for rigging when we don't even have the basics. Don't go asking for UV and when we don't have basic tools. Whenever you're doing this kind of work, try and help the developer to just get it in, in stages. So the next stage would be those tools that we've said. Uh, and if, the, if they come along, then, you know, we can work our way up and, and help the developer get to the next level. Thank you so much for watching these videos. I hope you like them. And if you do, please give us a thumbs up. It does help us to manage the algorithm a little bit better in our favor. And if you want to give us a thumbs up, then why not subscribe as well? And we can let you know when we drop new content, which is every week. Have a great week, everyone.